Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to Fireside again. All right, as usual, it's time for today's question. What is your very favorite thing to do outside in the summer? Your very favorite thing to do outside in the summer. For me, it's swimming. I love swimming. For you, it could be hiking, playing with friends, hanging out at the park, whatever you love. Now, on the count of three, tell me your favorite thing to do on the perfect summer day. One, two, three. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was so many things. I love that. Well, this week we're talking about adventures and it's crazy. Somehow, we're almost halfway through ours this week. We're looking at all of the things that we need to have in our backpack as we learn to follow Jesus and shine bright to the world around us. And as we figure out how to do that, we've discovered three things so far. See if you can remember. The first was, that's right, love. Do you remember our little keychain? We learned about God's love as we look at the life of Jesus and how to share it with others. The second was joy. <laughs> my poor little orange is gonna get squished in my backpack. But Jesus, he brought so much joy into the world and now we get to share that with those around us. It's pretty awesome. And the third was peace. Remember, my little ladybug, Theodore. A reminder that no matter what happens, we might feel afraid or worried in certain situations, but we know that God is with us no matter what. And today, we're looking at the fourth thing that we need to make sure we have in our backpacks. Do you have your backpack ready? Well, do you remember our letter from Paul in Galatians? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Shout it out when you think you hear item number 4. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. <laughs> that was it. Patience. So what do I have in my backpack to remind me to have patience? A banana. Why? Well, this one's yellow, and yes, pretend, but have you ever tried to eat a green banana? One that's not quite ripe? They're really hard to peel, and they don't taste very good. In order to really enjoy a banana, I have to wait until it's nice and yellow, then, it will be delicious. Then I can make a banana split with it. Huh? That's a good summer treat. Patience, it means the ability to wait or to continue doing something even when it's really hard or even to suffer without complaining or becoming annoyed. That's not very easy. Can you think of someone who you know who's really patient? A teacher, your mom, your dad, a friend? Someone who's taught me about patience is my neighbor, Leroy. Leroy, he has the most incredible garden. He plants all kinds of things in it. Potatoes, corn, zucchini, carrots, garlic, even some fruit trees that grow all kinds of fruit. And every year, Leroy shares his harvest with me and my husband, Andrew. There's so much. And so a couple of years ago, I thought, I would give it a try and plant a garden too. So I did what Leroy does. I planted seeds, I watered them, and then I waited for a few days. But things took a bit longer to come up than I wanted, and to be honest, I kind of forgot about them. Before I knew it, my garden was full of weeds and no vegetables, and I gave up. Unlike Leroy, I wasn't patient. I wanted to have potatoes and carrots right away. But Leroy, he's learned that gardening takes a lot of time and a lot of weeding and a lot of patience. And let me tell you, it's worth it. There's a story in the Bible that paints a perfect picture of 
patience and why that's important as we follow Jesus. James chapter 5, verse 7 to 8, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage for the coming of the Lord is near. Can you think of a time that you had to be patient and wait for something? Something that in the end turned out amazing, but it took a long time. There's another story in the book of Luke, and it talks about a man named Simeon who waited his entire life for baby Jesus to be born. He waited for years and years and years. And then, near the end of his life, Jesus' mom and dad, Mary and Joseph, they brought baby Jesus to the temple and Simeon, he finally got to see him. He was full of joy and Simeon, he'd been patient and God had kept his promise. God gives us patience to help us, to help us remember that he always has what's best planned for us. It just might take a little bit of time before we get it. And we know that God is patient with us. Even when I goof up or we disobey God, God waits for us to make the right choices and follow him again. God loves us even when we're not showing love to him. So patience, it's another part of the fruit of the spirit. Things that we wanna make sure that we have in our backpack as we travel this road together. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, Joy, peace, where'd he go? Oh, patience. Oh, and that's as far as we're getting today. God is so patient that he keeps waiting. He loves us all so much that he doesn't want anyone to miss out on getting to know God or having a relationship with him for our whole life. And so you should have these four items in your backpack. Do you? And they don't have to be the same ones. Be creative. Find something that reminds you of love, of joy, of peace, and of patience. And then tomorrow, we'll find out what the next two are. Yep, two in one day. So get ready and make some room in your backpack. All right, guys, let's pray and then we'll see you tomorrow. God, thank you for this time today. Thank you that in these moments, we get to learn more about you and stories from the Bible that teach us who you are and what it means to follow you and how we can shine brightly to the world around us. We love you. Thanks for camp. Amen. All right, guys, have a great rest of your night and we will see you tomorrow.